This is part two of a talk that I began to give last week. And if you haven't watched part one already, then this will probably not make a lot of sense. So if you haven't, please go and watch the video that I made on the basic principles and ideas of extensive reading and vocabulary range. And then let's come back and now we're all ready to watch this one on selecting appropriate texts for expanding vocabulary range through extensive reading. What do we want to do here? The main idea is that we need to, first and foremost, determine vocabulary size in terms of approximate numbers of word families that we know. If you're doing this for yourself, you take the vocabulary size test. If you are a teacher and you're doing it for your students, you can administer it to them. Somehow you need to find out approximately how many word families you know, be it 7,000, 8,000, 10,000. Uh, we need to know that range so that we can go on to the second step here of selecting texts, most preferably novels, and I'll talk about that a great deal more uh, in just a moment, uh, where that vocabulary size that you found provides 98% textual coverage. So if you do know, or your students do know, 7,000 words, you want to read books where 7,000 words gives you 98% comprehension. Whereas if you know 10,000, you want to read books where 10,000 words gives you 98% textual coverage. So then you can proceed to read extensively at that level until you notice that the percentage of unknown words uh, has really started to drop. Um, I can't give any rule of thumb for this. Reading extensively means reading extensively, reading a lot. It, it takes a while. You'll need to read a number of books um, and somehow, maybe just subjectively or maybe actively by blacking out words on a page like I did, determine that uh, you are now have, you have a higher level of vocabulary and you can proceed to the next stage of beginning to select texts that provide 98% coverage at, at the next highest family level. So if you start out at 7,000 words, uh, word families, uh, read four or five books, I don't know, maybe more, uh, at that level. And then you can start to read books where 8,000 word families gives you 98% coverage and systematically work your way up building your vocabulary in this fashion. So uh, how on earth are we going to systematically select texts where we can find that we have 98% textual coverage? Well, you need a, a text analysis uh, tool, program, software, and there are a number of good ones, freeware programs. Uh, there might be others, but uh, I know in particular about two that are very good for this. One is called Range, and one is called Ant Word Profiler. And you can get these uh, at these sites here. The first one, Range, this is the main one, you can get at the site of Professor Paul Nation, uh, who's a professor at the University of Victoria in New Zealand. And uh, if you're interested in the research that I was talking about last time, it's, it's all basically his. You can get that also on this page on his research publications. But to get this tool, scroll down here to resources, uh, and you'll see range programs. And there are two, range program with the general service list and the uh, academic word list that I talked about last time, and the range program with the British national corpus list. We want this second one. The first one only has the, the 3,000 most common words, uh, but this one has 14,000 word families. So we want to be more comprehensive and build our vocabulary up to that range. So we want to take this second one. You can explore the, the first one if you like as well, but I'm only going to show you the second one now. And an alternative to this is a program prepared by uh, Professor Lawrence Anthony at the University of Waseda in Japan. And if you go to his site, you can scroll down and get the uh, Ant Word Profiler here. They basically do the same thing. Um, Paul Nation himself told me that this is a little bit more elegant, uh, but it doesn't come with the word families. You need to get the word families from the range program. So once you've gotten the range program and you open it up, you'll see uh, that you have a number of actual programs. Uh, there's one called Frequency and two versions of range. We'll just use the main one. And before we start, let's look. Last week I showed you the base word family one, the 1,000 most common words in, in the English language that give you uh, 1,000, 80, 85% 80, coverage of text, basically. Um, but you get another 14 base word families. So you can open up any one of these and see here's the 7,000 list and what they look like. Uh, so you have a lot more word families to work with, analyze, if you're a person who likes to do specific specific 
uh, vocabulary work, this can be very helpful to you. But we want to pay attention. I'm talking about 14,000 word families. So notice there are 15, 16 lists. And these 15 and 16 lists, we need to pay a lot of attention to. The 15th list is a word list of proper names. And this is going to be very important in accurately determining how difficult a book really is. Uh, likewise, the 16th list is uh, interjections and, and oaths and grunts and things like that. And we might want to add words to this one too to get a more accurate word count of, of how difficult the book is. So um, you can get these materials and look at this. And then you need to you have our text software here. The, the, uh, here's the Ant Word Profiler looks like this. And the range program that we're going to be using more uh, looks like this one here. Um, but we need to have some text to work with. So let's go back and talk about that for a moment. Um, what should you read and where can you get the text to read? Um, as I said, novels are generally the most appropriate thing for a number of reasons. Uh, one, as we said, the whole idea of extensive reading is it should be pleasurable and interesting. And uh, perhaps uh, some people really do like various kinds of nonfiction as well. But it's easier to get a, caught up in a story. And the length of a book is important as well because, um, well, for really uh, absorbing vocabulary by uh, context, uh, each author naturally has his or her own style and tends to have his or own, her own uh, vocabulary that he'll use uh, with, with some frequency. So if you read a longer book by one author, you're more likely to see these same words uh, come up again and again in different contexts, and that's how you will come to absorb them. So um, last week I talked about the fact that you're basically truly conversationally fluent when you know seven, 8,000 words. So uh, a lot of people like to read, well, contemporary popular fiction, uh, books by people like, I don't know, uh, John Grisham. And the thing with reading books like that is that they're written in a very colloquial language. So on the off chance, uh, maybe it's not an off chance, uh, if you don't have an opportunity to develop conversational vocabulary, then it might be a very good idea to, to read some books like that. But uh, presuming that you have that range already, um, that kind of book is not really going to help you to develop your vocabulary into a higher range. In order to develop much higher range vocabulary, you need to read, well, really well-written books, uh, good works of literature. So where can you find, if you don't know some of these, if you don't have uh, ideas already on your own of what kind of books you'd like to read, um, you can find an idea of some really good or even great books to read from looking at some great books lists. There are a lot of places that you could find these, but if you go to my website, uh, I have uh, on my great books page, I have made a compilation of a number of uh, other lists of great books. So you can go and, and look at these uh, lists here to choose some really well-written and, and meaningful books that will tend to have a very high range of vocabulary to help you expand. Uh, and talking about expansion, uh, I have put a lot of time and effort into, uh, I found that these standard lists uh, had a lot of gaps in it. So I've expanded, made my own list here. Uh, and you can go here and get some good ideas of, of different types of texts that are well worth reading and probably have uh, a high range of vocabulary that they can help you expand in that way. But I guess this is presuming that you uh, already have uh, a fairly high uh, level of vocabulary, but uh, as I said last week, uh, I have pretty much determined that on the average, a lot of, uh, well, Asian, Southeast Asian, East Asian English language professionals tend to have a vocabulary range only in about the 7,000 word family range, which, as we saw, is perfectly conversationally fluent, but uh, for beginning to read books, when you only know about that many word families, you're still basically needing to read uh, works that are intended for younger readers. So uh, if you want to get a good idea for some texts like that where you can read them, uh, you can go to this site here, Classics for Young People, which has not just lists of them, but the actual texts of really established, well-written, uh, good books uh, that were originally intended for younger readers. And so the vocabulary range tends to be more restricted. That would be a good place to start if you, uh, if you or your students uh, need something in the, say, seven, 8,000 family range. But you could also go to this Baldwin Online Children's Literature Project, which also has a lot of very good books uh, originally intended for younger readers. 
and uh, other places to go just for more adult texts or texts in general. There's the online book page and uh, Project Gutenberg. You can go here and you can get tons of books, certainly all the great books, uh, anything that's out of print or with, with out of, uh, I'm sorry, not out of print, but uh, out of copyright, um, you can go here and get text. Obviously, if you want to read more modern things uh, that have copyright still valid, you'll need to have your own uh, uh, private e-sources for uh, text like that. But in any case, you want to go to a place like one of these sites and get some text to read and analyze. And then, uh, once you've done that, <coughs> you need to take your text and how can you prepare it for text analysis and what can we do with it? Um, the procedure you need to follow is pretty important. Okay, so I'll go through it. We want to take a text and prepare it to uh, analyze with range. One thing we need to do, uh, you need to take out the hyphens. If you leave the hyphens in connecting words, it will give you a false reading. It will confuse it. Um, and then we're going to run our text through the range program. And we need to set it uh, to use all 16 base word files. And we also need to set it to sort it by frequency instead of alphabetically. Once we've done that, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take the 15th and the 16th word lists, which are the proper names and the interjections, and we're going to add these totals together, and we're also going to add them to the total that we get of the word token coverage of all 14 base word families, and that will give us our percentage, our percent coverage that we know. And then we can take that and we can look on the level of the scale of the first of the 14,000 word families, and we're going to try to find where a given book will give us the 98 percentage to tell us how difficult it is and whether we're pre uh, prepared to read this book uh, with our current vocabulary range. So uh, let's do that uh, with a couple of books. I already put them in here. I went and I got uh, one book that I thought is uh, sort of a children's classic, Pinocchio. It's translated from Italian, but here's an English version of it. And I got, uh, that that's should be an easy book. And I got Moby Dick, which is uh, a notoriously difficult book. So let's see how difficult these are to read. Again, the first thing we need to do before we analyze them is we need to replace the hyphen with a space hyphen space and replace everything with that. And then we'll save this. Okay, so now we've got Pinocchio ready to analyze. And let's do the same thing with Moby Dick replace space hyphen with space hyphen space and replace everything and now we can save that as well so now we have two texts that we are ready to analyze so let's do it we go to the range program and let's open let's do Pinocchio first we're going to go find it here it is save now and once you open it you also need to save it you need to save it under a slightly different name uh, Pinocchio I'll just call it pin okay pin for abbreviated to, to keep it and this is going to be saved as our range result file so you save that as the range result and then as I said we need to take our text and it's set to do just the base word three files we want to change that to 16 to get all of them and then it's also set to sort it by uh, alphabetically, but we want to change that and sort it by frequency. So if we run that, it's very fast, we'll now get a readout. And we can go to our readout, and here it is, Pinocchio range, and we're going to see lots of detailed information here. Okay, this is the main interesting part here. This is telling us uh, right now, a preliminary readout, these are the word family lists, uh, these are the word tokens, word types, and the number of families that are used. So just looking across here, for example, of the first thousand words, most common words in the family, uh, there are a total of 42,791 words uh, used in this book. Of that 42,791, fully 35,311 come from the first thousand word families. And those word families make up then 82.5%. 52% of the words in the whole book. 
there are 1,443 tokens, uh, that is distinctly different words that are used there. And of the 1,000 words that are in that uh, first 1,000 word list, fully 733 word families are actually called into play. So uh, this is what we need to take and look at to get our analysis. Uh, how are we going to do that? Let's go back here uh, and look uh, at uh, some basic procedure before I run through it. Um, what we need to do is we need to produce a list of the percent figures from the tokens percent column. That is from this one. We need these figures here. And then uh, we need to put this list somehow, uh, compute the percentage as detailed above to get 98%. So I find it easiest to just configure Excel to compute it automatically. Um, and let's do that then. First of all, let's go and let's take these lists here. And I'm just going to copy this and I'm going to put it into a blank Excel chart. And this is probably easier ways to do this, but I'm just going to copy the percentages that I want to have uh, from the tokens. And then I'm going to check them to make sure that I'm not mistyping anything. And once I'm finished, I will take these and I'll copy this column here. And I'll put this to where I have pre-configured the total to add up. So here, this is telling me in my preliminary readout of Pinocchio. Uh, that uh, because I have 0.23% uh, proper names and 0.21% oats and interjections uh, and 1.95% other words not in the list, um, these names and interjections, that totals to 0.44% that I can give myself. I can presume that I'll know and understand the names. And then the cumulative total of this, where I'm looking to get to 98%, I'm not getting there until I have 14,000 words, word families, which is a pretty difficult book. And yet we know that Pinocchio is a children's book, a children's classic. And so the problem here is that all these words that are not in the list, these 1.95%, we need to go look at those words. We need to go look at those words and do something with them in order to get an accurate word count. We need to go and we need to take the highest frequency names from the types not found in any list. We need to look at those, take the names. We need to add them to the base word 15 list. We need to put a zero after them when we do that like the other words on the list. And then we need to repeat the whole procedure to get a more accurate level of difficulty for this book. So again, our preliminary analysis shows us that we're not going to be able to read this book at 98% coverage until we know 14,000 word families. But are, we basically know this is really not that difficult. So let's go and let's look. We need to scroll down to the bottom. Just let's look at the way a readout is. Uh, here are the words in base list one, and it's telling you the most common book word used in the book is the. It appears 2,295 times. And if we scroll all the way down to the bottom, we will find the words that are not in this list. Base 12 families, base 13, fam 14 families, base 15 families. These are the proper names that are listed. And now the words that are not found in any list. We have Pinocchio, Geppetto, Candlewick, and a lot of other names that are really uh, common, but they're not on the list. So what we need to do, we need to, let's just take, because it takes a little bit, let's just take the first three names, copy these. Uh, and this is probably an easier way to do this as well, but I just put them into a Word file. And then you need to get rid of this information and replace it with a zero after each name. So we'll just take the first three most common words, words uh, that are, again, names that appear, Pinocchio appears 457 times in the book, Geppetto 74 times, Candlewick 32 times. So if we take these now, and then we can go, we can open our base word 15 list, and let's just copy these and put them 
at the top, put them anywhere, it doesn't matter. Okay, so now I've added these words to my base word list. I'm going to save this. I need to close this again. I need to close uh, this as well. And then I can just go and run the whole procedure again and look at my new readout. And I can do the same thing and I see, ah, I reduced the percentage not in the list from 1.95% to 0.64% just by taking those first three names. Let's do the whole thing over again. I'll copy this information. I'll put it in an Excel sheet. I will total up the percentages actually I could have just left it because I'm not changing anything except the words that are not on the list and the proper names that's all I really needed to change the proper names and the words not on the list. But if I take this now and I put this list together on this list here, instead of Pinocchio requiring me to know 14,000 words to get to the 98% level, I put this in here and I find that now I get 1.76 with adding Pinocchio, Candlewick, and Geppetto. And actually I get to the 98,000 level 98% level with just 7,000 words. 7,000 word families will enable me to read this book uh, with 98% uh, comprehension, the level we found that we need to have in order to, um, to, to do extensive reading. So this is the way that you run through the whole procedure and I did that uh, with uh, Moby Dick as well. We could run through that procedure to look at a difficult book, a difficult text, and see what that text level is going to be like. Um, let me, uh, for the time being, clear this out of here and just load in Moby Dick by opening. And then I need to save, remember, under another slightly different name. I'll call this MD. And then I leave it set at 16 base word files and sort by frequency. And I process this. And I will get my readout here. And if I look at this book, obviously it's a much more difficult book. Uh, it has 219,028 total words in it. The words in the first 1,000 give us only 73.82% coverage. Um, so if we take this, we find, oh, a full 3.63% of the words are not in the list. So let's take this one and do the same procedure. Copy all this information, put it somewhere where we can just get our basic list of the tokens that we need. So it's 73 73.82, 7.41, 3.97, 3.33, 1.79, 1.51, 0.88, 0.56, 0.52, 0.45, 0.47, 0.37, 0.34, 0.19, 0.62, 0.14, and 3.63. So already right here in many ways we can see how this is a more difficult book than Pinocchio. Even if we didn't know that already, if we could just compare the first thousand words only give us 73.82% coverage, whereas with Pinocchio it's 84.28%. Uh, 
whereas the uh, 11th and 12,000 word families are still giving us almost a half a percentage, 0.47 or 0.37. Uh, with Pinocchio, when we go there, it's only 0.11%. Uh, so uh, in many ways, we can see how this is a more difficult book if we didn't know that just by this text analysis. But if we take this and we put this in here, we'll find, again, uh, with 14,000 words, we're still only going to be at 96.37%. So this is clearly a, a very difficult book to read. But let's go and have a look at the readout that we got from it. We can do the same thing. If we go down to the bottom of the page, towards the bottom, I should say not way at the bottom, we want to find the section of types not found in any list. And we can still see that, well, the proper names, Ahab, appears 517 times, Stubb, Queequeg, Starbuck, Pequod, Nantucket, okay, all these proper names, it takes a while, I can do some of them. I'll, again, I'll run through the same procedure, you copy this, uh, you, it's easiest if you put it in a, uh, a Word file, and then we need to get rid of this information and replace it with a zero right after the name to show that it's not in any list. And then if we take just these five names that appear several hundreds or thousands of times cumulatively in the book, making up the unknown words, making it appear extraordinarily difficult, uh, if we take these words and we add them to our base word 15 list together with the names that we added from Pinocchio. There's a space between them. I don't think it matters. Okay, uh, then I will save this. Close this. I need to close my earlier results as well for Pinocchio. And now I can run this again. And comparing the new results, just by taking the five top names, I've reduced the percentage of unknown words from 3.63% to 2.99%. So if I were to take more names, I could still, I could get it down even further, but all the same, this is probably going to be one of the more difficult books that you can find. You probably will need a uh, 14,000 word vocabulary in order to uh, get this book at, say, 98%. So uh, you can start with Pinocchio and work your way up to Moby Dick in this fashion. So let's go and look at some other things that we can do once we've found this kind of uh, material. Um, you have, we've, we've run through the procedure for doing all of this. Let's look at some other options, other considerations. When we look at these lists, let's go back and open up uh, the range list for Moby Dick or for Pinocchio. Here it is. Um, I kind of went over very swiftly, but if we go and we look at the word lists that found in them, some people, uh, you can do actual vocabulary preparation, vocabulary learning. I personally, in all of my language learning, have, have never found that to be particularly uh, necessary or interesting, but I know that there are a lot of people who, who think that it is or who actively enjoy it. And so, uh, obviously, when you get these lists, um, things will occur to you at yourself uh, that you can do, but there are obviously many things. If you, uh, I've been talking very systematically about, you know, building up an extensive program looking for books, but, you know, life doesn't work that way all the time. Maybe you know that there's a book out there that you really want to read, but uh, you uh, feel like you don't have the vocabulary ready for it yet, and you're not patient enough to say, I, I'll systematically work my way up to it. I'd like to start reading it now. Well, one thing you could do is you could take this uh, readout and you could go to uh, the some of the word lists here and you could look at the most frequent words, say, in the... I should just do a search to find it more swiftly. So here's base list eight. Say you have 7,000 words, base list eight. You could look at the most common words that appear uh, in base list eight or base list 12, and you say, well, if I don't know these words, these appear quite often, uh, perhaps I can memorize these, look these up, uh, do some uh, word vocabulary study uh, preparation uh, by looking at the frequency lists. 
So that's obviously one option if you like to work with word lists. Uh, here you have them, so you can do whatever you want with them. Another option that you can do, uh, obviously Pinocchio is the beginning and uh, Moby Dick is the ending of this whole process. We're not really going to want to compare these two books, but we can. We already have uh, Moby Dick in here. Let's add Pinocchio again. Let's add Pinocchio again and put him with this. And now we need to save this under a different name, yet another different name. Let's call this uh, MD Pin. So now we can do the same thing. We can prepare a list, a comparative list of two or more texts. If we open this one, now we'll get a readout of the total number of words that are in both books and the comparative readout will no longer be just showing us uh, one book. Now we have a range of two books because both books are being compared and we put in Moby Dick first so that's frequency one and uh, Pinocchio in frequency two and so uh, and you're not going to notice this on word list one but certainly when you go down to some other word lists you can see which words are uh, in one book that are not in another book. Obviously in this instance we're going to have a lot more words in Moby Dick than we have in, uh, in Pinocchio. Uh, so what list are we looking at now? This is the... Okay, we can see these words are in... Uh, these are the words that are in Moby Dick in this column here in the this column and these are the words that are in Pinocchio so there are a lot of words that are not in Pinocchio that are appearing in Moby Dick so if you wanted to compare what you've read with what you're going to read this is a good way of doing that and finally uh, obviously my own greatest interest is in, in learning language other than English and uh, I've only been able to show you this uh, for doing words doing books uh, in English but in principle the range program runs on or the uh, the uh, ant word profiler they run off word lists so if we were to have and prepare word lists uh, for other languages they could run off that and do that and so I'd like to mention at this point that I have been contacted as a result of my earlier video, uh, well, by one gentleman at uh, Yale University who's working on sort of a vocabulary word family size test for Chinese. Uh, maybe he'll provide a link here if he cares to, to do that. And also by the people who made the uh, vocabulary size test at uh, Victoria University who have told me that uh, there are a number of projects to expand that to some other languages underway there. Uh, Spanish and German, I think Japanese they said as well. So um, this kind of thing is possible. It's very interesting. I'd love to see it myself and so perhaps I can en encourage it a little bit uh, by, well, I, I've already been contacted by some serious vocabulary researchers as a result of this video. Maybe some others will see it as well. Uh, if you are in a position to do serious vocabulary research, to prepare this kind of material, a word list, a program for uh, some other languages, and you can write that up in a scholarly fashion, uh, I'm the editor-in-chief of the RELC journal, and uh, I can't uh, push any article through the process. Everything has to be approved uh, by peer review process, but uh, as the editor I can certainly select which articles uh, go out for review and when when everything has been uh, approved then I can choose which ones will actually uh, be published in the journal. So uh, if you do any research uh, on vocabulary, range, size, and extensive reading for uh, other languages, languages other than English, and you submit that to the journal, I can do my best to make sure that it gets a, a favorable and fair hearing. Um, so, um, this is what I've had to say about choosing texts for um, extensive reading. I hope it's uh, interesting and helpful, and I hope you can enjoy expanding your vocabulary range by doing this wonderful process of extensive reading. Thank you for listening.